Hey guys, what's up? We are the Jonas Brothers, and you are watching an MSN exclusive. How are we doing, guys? I'm pretty good. Doing well. Yeah. yeah Back good. in like a home away from home. We shot a movie here. Yeah. Two yeah. years ago. Two. Two, two, movies, two here. movies here. Two movies here. We've done uh, a tour start here. Uh, yeah. Been a part of charity runs here. So this is kind of like a second home to us. Yeah. Or third home. Where did you shoot the movies? Was it here in Toronto, or was it like kind of? Did you go to the? We, out, have you seen the Ontario outskirts. properly? Yeah. yeah. yeah that's oh, that's good. And also uh, Halliburton, Canada, which yeah. we loved. We have rehearsals here though. You know, in Delta Pinestone Resort. That's our getaway. You know, if anything like, if anything like goes awry and bad everywhere, mm -hmm. that's our... The world ends, we're coming to Canada. We're going to Halliburton. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate that. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, speaking of things ending, I've seen you destroy tablets before, so I'm going to leave my surface here. Yes, let's just keep be it careful. there. Yeah. You don't want to see them wrap. I forgot about yeah. that. That's I watched it last night. It was funny. I like that. It, it was actually... It was a good job. Yeah. He, he really believed it, too. At a, at a certain point, he looked at you like, ha, ah. then he got really concerned. <laughs> he got really concerned. We should accept, Good Morning America punked, for yes. people who don't know what we're talking about. You don't about. know, yeah. yeah. So, first time, what can you tell me? I know we can't see it until tomorrow, technically, right. but yeah. well, I know it's Vegas, I know it's big, and it's fun. Well, Nick was hosting Miss USA pageant, and um, that was funny, by the way, that's what she said. Um, <laughs> Nick was hosting Miss we all, USA. We all bought it. Yeah. <laughs> Nick was hosting Miss USA at the time. We called all our friends from the East Coast, West Coast, and we said, why don't you guys get to Vegas tomorrow, yeah. and we're going to shoot an impromptu music video. So we got a team together, we got GoPros, and we filmed the majority of it ourselves, really, just like handheld stuff. And it turned out way better than we expected. <laughs> it's a little bit nerve-wracking when you have the mixture of Vegas, alcohol, you, something's going to go south, right? So <laughs> it actually turned out great. We were really pleased with it. And um, it's just kind of a party video. If you were to go yeah. to Vegas, what it would feel like for the first time, doing uh, everything from gambling, losing, winning, to... Um, Guys, be, uh, some of our buddies being turned down by girls, whatever it may be, we, we wanted to kind of put it all in there, and it turned out really organic and fun because it was real. It wasn't like yeah. a bunch of uh, models that we hired to be our friends and look cool. <laughs> so uh, we're really pleased with it. Because that's how it's always been. You've always hired models around to, to be your friends. The majority of the videos these days, it's like you watch it and you're like, that doesn't really seem like they even know that person. And they're like, you know, exactly. trying to be like, hey, we're best friends. I've known him since I was six. I'm just, yeah. Not so much. No. So I've heard parts of the record. I haven't heard the whole thing. I think I've heard about six songs. All right. I thought okay. maybe we can go through them. And let's start with Pom Poms because everyone's heard Pom Poms. Yeah. But is it true there's a French version? We're in Canada. You're right. pretty pretty correct. We we did, we caught a bunch of different versions of the girls singing. When they say, um, if you want to see me put my Pom Pom down, we did those in like, like 15 different languages, I think. Yeah. The French wow. one sounds the best, though. It really does. We appreciate the Canada. I'm a Thank sucker you. for the... For French in general, but it it does. Korean it actually sounds, sounds pretty cool too. Yeah, Korean sounds. It sounds good. very K-pop. Did you did you know the words? Can you understand them? Uh, we and understand them just because the translation is fairly close to the original lyrics in English. Uh, but you know they had to take some liberties to make it fit or whatever else. Right. But uh, some languages they're like, what are pom poms? So we had to kind of adjust to pompones. write. Pompones. Pompones is one of those. Pompones. <laughs> that sounds pretty. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then we, we, got, um, we got, like, in Australia, the pompons got, um, the words actually got asterisked because, um, I guess, that's... Pompons is slang for, um, yeah. Something, we'll let that one go. Something dirty, I yeah. don't know. <laughs> we'll let that one go. Yeah. Um, Unless you figured it out. It was like, oh, okay, so that's happening now. <laughs> Was the horns, from a production point, were the horns influenced by the lyrical content of the song, or did you have the beat going and then said, okay, this needs to be like a cheerleader kind of thing? Yeah, you know what was interesting about this record is that uh, as we were making it, I'd say uh, on the production side, I, I had a song that was kind of the precursor to whatever we did next, you know, and as we built out the record, you know, songs like First Time, for instance, uh, came in the earlier side of making the record, and that was... We're all sitting around listening to Fleetwood Mac everywhere, thinking, yeah. how can we do a version of this song that have the same feeling, but that feels current, has some Calvin Harris-style influences, and, and kind of mash the two up. So that's where that came from. With Pom Poms, uh, one of our friends from Norway actually showed us this artist, Bernhoff, um, had this song, Come On and Talk, that we all loved. And it was, it was just a really 
positive, uh, exciting, funky song yeah. that we uh, said, you know, this is this kind of song is what we're missing for the record. And so I went in and started building a track out in a similar vibe, kind of a similar feeling. And the marching band element sort of just came about. And then as we started throwing our uh, lyric ideas, you know, the pom-poms concept felt right. And uh, we rolled with it and kind of came out with something we were really proud of and, and had a lot of fun making. The world. You, in an interview recently I was watching, started talking about it being about U.S. manufacturing <laughs> leaving overseas. <laughs> so, I, I, I was, so I listened to the song like ten times yesterday. Trying to figure it out. To, oh. I do not hear that at all. Don't was, think. You know, you know what's really hilarious is that... <laughs> We wrote, guys we wrote two out of songs fun. about the world. Uh. We wrote two songs about the world. One, <laughs> the world, didn't make the record, and okay. this world. And so these guys were even like screwing with me interview. afterwards. You could see me and Nick looking at each other like, like, mm, yeah, like you, know that run, you know that one didn't make the record. And I was like, oh, okay. Really well, easily confused. The other song that he was talking about is really cool. It's but so awesome. It was just so funny that after the interview we go... <laughs> We're like, someone's got to figure that out. That yeah. We were talking about I'm that guy. Yeah, you yeah. are. Um, um, it was so funny. <laughs> the world is actually my favorite song. It's got a cool piano. Who's playing the piano on it? Uh, Nick was, yeah. Yeah, Nick yeah. produced it, you know, and then Live Joe plays it, which is really cool, and it's really fun. Um, the live version that we're playing, actually, on these on these shows has been incredible because it's it's really a good moment. It's really a, a good feel-good song. And there's kind of like The a song throw. is like a picnic. That's how I view it. Yeah. And Sandbox isn't a picnic. No. 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 Even though I was it's, trying it's to correlate the two It's with a them. different kind of picnic. Um, <laughs> a picnic in the dark rather than the park. Exactly. A picnic nice. in the dark the rather than the park. I like it. You said on the radio, too, I, I think in that, same, in that same interview, maybe you were lying, too. I don't know or confused. That some <laughs> lyrics on this record might offend people. Um, I think they might. And I think they already have. I think <laughs> uh, have you <laughs> seen Backlash? That was going to be my question. Have you seen Backlash? Yeah, I mean, just, uh, you know, I think there's maybe... You can't satisfy everybody. There's yeah. maybe a few people in the audience that are like, their heads are turning when we might say certain things live. Um, we've yet to play Sandbox live, and I think that'll be the one that offend, surprise, shock. I think Love. that's the three words we hope to achieve. I mean, I'm not, I don't think we're trying to offend anybody, but I think that there's something about every artist that you just have to put your guard down and say, you know what, I'm going to go in on this, and if somebody gets offended, so be it. I know that at least I was being truthful to myself and to the music I was making. Speaking of being truthful um, about wedding bells, Nick, you told the crowd, it makes you feel uncomfortable. I guess that would have been yeah. in the fall. Now that you've lived with the song a little more, still yeah. feel uncomfortable? Or is it, has it grown on you and now it's just another song? Yeah, no, it's definitely, you know, the, the, the way I view each song is, is uh, the goal is to try to capture a moment in time and, and your feelings in a moment. Uh, and it may not always carry over into to months or years later. Uh, but you can at least capture that moment and feel that way again for a split second that you perform it live. Uh, songs like Wedding Bells um, are similar to, I feel like, I just got to see Fleetwood Mac play in, in another Fleetwood Mac thing. But I, I no, it's all right. Mac. One of the best bands ever. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah um, right. unbelievable. I saw them play at Jones Beach just before we started our tour. And you go to that show and you watch them play and it's just unbelievable to see them relive some of the hurt and the pain in their lives that they were living as kind of uh, this really crazy triangle, uh, you know, and you can see it all unfold. And, you know, they look back on it now with smiles on their face and it's fun. And I, I hope that in time we can do the same thing with some of the songs on this record that, that maybe still are sort of uh, tough to, to just lay out there. But yeah. uh, it's getting easier and I think that over time it will, will get easier. Talking about Fleetwood Mac just because you got some younger fans, as you may or may not know. Let's give some Fleetwood Mac recommendations. One tune Ooh. each. Everywhere is like yeah. a good starting place, obviously, yeah. Yeah. for everyone, because they've all heard it, and it's a great song. Uh, Dreams, too, same kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but for me, As Long As You Follow, it's one of my favorites. A beautiful melody, yeah. great guitar line, just a great groove overall. Yeah. Fleetwood just laying in the pocket. <laughs> That's, I think that was something else we talked about early on, and you know, even setting up the, sh the shows that we've been playing. And like I said earlier, it's about a tone as well. It's not just you know, punch them in the face for the next like twelve songs in a row and high energy, high energy. Like we no, go the live record. I mean the live the live show. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because then we do three songs and then we go into a song called Found, 
and it's a different feel and it's a different in a vibe but it's not our typical way of doing things and it and I think it sets the tone for all the new songs we're playing mm. and for the first time people are hearing it and I think it does the same on the album as well how are people reacting I mean hearing these songs I mean they, they, I'm sure the crowd sing along to 95% and then you play these songs they've never heard and then the next look, show they're singing I about 80% of the words so they like YouTube yeah, it or yeah, whatever exactly. they found the, okay. I look forward to those moments because yeah. it's the first time it's quiet and I don't mean where like, we don't enjoy when people are going crazy but it's nice to watch them just listening to the words we're saying and try to understand some of the lyrics that we're talking about and sometimes for us you get kind of a weird emotion of well, I'm about to tell them this story that I've kept a secret for the last three, four, eight years that I never spoke about and uh, it's, it's nice to kind of anticipate those moments in the show. Have them actually listening. Yeah. yeah. Waiting for, yeah. I gotta let you go soon. So we do something called five questions, five quick questions. Love it. One word answers. Everyone okay. can answer. Road or studio? Road for me, Road. personally. Producer. So split, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, especially if you think totally. produce this record. He has a studio on the road. Does that count? It, it counts. It yeah. counts. Like a little Pro Tools so it's both. rig with an O2 or something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lennon or McCartney? Ooh, McCartney. McCartney. Is that because you played him drive my car? Yeah, I would yeah, say yeah, McCartney. Yeah. He's just the best ever. <laughs> hey, I'm not going to argue with you. Uh, <laughs> when you hear a song, it usually hits you first. Lyrics, melody, or rhythm? I would say for me, probably... Was it melody? Yeah. Rhythm. If someone's never heard the Jonas Brothers before, what song do they start with? They start with... <laughs> oh, man. First time. First time would be a good place to start. I'll yeah. go with that. First time. Is this the new... Yeah. Okay. Joe? I would say maybe uh, Found. Found also. Yeah. All because right. I think it's... Um, I think it's what a lot of people are... I, I don't want to be... <laughs> it sounds kind of stubborn saying this, but... I think it's similar to what people are listening to right now with the Frank Oceans and, mm -hmm. and kind of the melodic changes and vibes similar sort of, to yeah, like sort a throwback new, to like new school Fleetwood Mac. Like alternative... Stuff. Pop R&B thing. Yeah. So I think it kind of cool. sits in that bracket, and I think people that listen to um, artists like that, I think, would, would, would enjoy it. And the second song you listen to is called What Do I Mean to You. Okay. You have a heart attack. We just gave you three. Heart attack. That's all right. <laughs> Sorry. We love this album. Okay. Yeah, so it seems, as you should. <laughs> as you I should. Uh, in one word, Jonas Brothers. Um, Reinvented. Oh, that's good and appropriate. I'll go with that. <laughs> good work. <laughs> He's a fan. I would say probably family is always something that kind of connects us. Oh, uh, that's, that's a that. sweet answer. <laughs> Anti-family. <No. laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. you. Of course, awesome. Man.